Uh, as you know, for the last couple of classes, we've been discussing normative ethical theories. That's the theories which tell us what we ought to do. I wanted a liberal arts education, and I wanted a place with small classes, and students would get more of an individualized education rather than a processed education. And uh, Hamilton just offered that. You've got to be able to keep up the work. You can't say, okay, I'm into this school, it was tough getting in here, now I can relax and have an easy four years. You've got to keep working. I think one thing which Hamilton professors are particularly receptive to is criticism from students. They want students who are going to, to really ask why rather than just to passively accept. It's not just that it's a small campus, it's an unusually friendly campus. Friendships are very close. I've made a lot of friends. Just walking to class, you see a lot of people that you know. There's so many times, like, I'll find myself saying hello. I'll end up saying it, like, 15 times in a row in the space of about 30 seconds. For those of us who know it well, Hamilton is a very special place. I'm Hank Payne, president of Hamilton College. Hamilton is a small, highly selective liberal arts college in upstate New York. It is a campus of great beauty, located in a lovely rural setting with a rigorous climate. We have 145 remarkably devoted faculty, people who have dedicated their lives to learning about their chosen field and to sharing that knowledge with others. After World War II, those movements often succeeded. Students and faculty talk a lot together. Nothing happened. We Nothing believe happened. that the constant and open exchange of ideas is at the heart of learning. <laughs> then there was a response to a message. The goal of a Hamilton education is to enhance the individual's ability to experience and understand the world to its fullest and to participate as a creative and caring citizen. We try both to introduce students to what is known and to make them aware of what they do not yet understand. Above all, we try to create lifelong learners, people with a capacity to grow. Such people lead the most fulfilling lives, contribute to their communities, and compete effectively in business, the professions, the sciences, and the arts. Rather than my talking, though, listen to some of our students. They come from many different backgrounds, but they have all shared the Hamilton experience. Uh, music and the trumpet have been a big part of my activities in high school and now in college. The brass choir is a uh, strong ensemble and uh, We've toured Europe and various regions of the United States, you know, from Chicago and Detroit to New York and Boston. It's a lot of fun. After a while, you gain a sense of the history, and uh, you realize that while there have been students walking around this campus, this very campus, for close to 175 years, and that uh, the age of the buildings and whatnot just all add to the atmosphere, which uh, which I find inspirational even. When I first arrived, we had a meeting with our faculty advisor, and one of the first things that he told me was that Hamilton will train you for nothing but prepare you for everything. So you can study computer science at the same time you study English or public speaking, and you try to get a wide variety of, of departments and disciplines. And that's basically what the liberal arts education is about, and I think Hamilton really provides that. I like the closeness of the campus, the small atmosphere, and being able to talk with the professors whenever I want to. That's one thing, the professors are very, very available. What I wanted from education was something that much more participatory than just going into a lecture hall and sitting there and taking notes for an hour or an hour and a half. I wanted to be able to take an active part in my education and maybe ha have smaller classes. It's nice to sit in a class with eight students or 12 students, discuss a work of literature or, or any other reading, and just there and argue, and, <laughs> and maybe draw blood. <laughs> the professors are very eager to teach. 
the reason they're here is teaching and they, they pursue scholarly activities, but you always get the sense that they're enthusiastic about what they're teaching. And the work that I'm going to tell you now, tell you about, is really hot off the press because it's from the February issue of Science. People have walked out on glaciers like this and actually seen water spouting right out of these crevasses. Furthermore, they've walked along on this ice in very cold days and they've seen steam coming out of these crevasses. So we're left with universal egoism to examine the view that everyone ought to pursue, pursue his or her self-interest without caring about anyone else. And remember, that pursuit of self-interest can be very clever. It doesn't have to be blatant. It doesn't have to be like, I want your pen, so watch out, I just grab it. It can be very subtle, like, wouldn't it be nice if you to give me your pen or you'd lose 10 points on the exam? <laughs> Stuff like that. Silence, exile, and cunning is what it says, what whoever has manufactured this poster has uh, put on it. And these are words, of course, from Joyce's portrait of the artist. They're very odd words if you think about it. What on earth is an artist going to do with silence? In what sense can an artist be silent? Well, one way in which an artist can be silent is never coming out in front of his work. And so too, Joyce, as an artist, is saying to us, read me if you can. He's not going to explain, he's not going to tell us what's going on. Okay, remember this is gonna be two. That might be a better photo to lead with. To me, an education is much more than what you're learning in the classroom. Right. Hamilton really offers you a chance to get involved and to step into roles that you probably would not get at other universities. Do you want his arms in? Yes. Okay. It gives a good perspective. Running The Spectator has been very helpful for me in terms of dealing with people and organizing all their efforts toward a common goal. And I think that's a skill which I've been able to experience here, which will help me throughout my life. Your second right hand page. As I got involved in the paper, um, more and more involved in the paper, I saw that there were a lot of opportunities to get to know what was happening around campus and really be a part of the campus. Will there be any student uh, representation on that committee? Sure, I think it's important. That I meet weekly with the president to discuss uh, what's going on on campus and. We, we both use that time to share all the information, which helps us both. The whole college expects to see the newspaper out on Friday afternoon, and, and you know that, and that's, there's a real deadline which you have to meet. It's a true deadline. If you don't make it to the printers, it doesn't come out, and you missed it. And that, that's been a, very helpful to me in terms of really seeing ultimate responsibility. And, not looking for explanations to say why something didn't happen. You just have to make it happen. One of the things that I asked myself before I came to school was, what, you know, what do I want to get out of this? And my answer to that was, I want to find an answer to the way life is. I wanted to, to go to school in a community that, that would be supportive and where I would be able to get to know other people. I think that people learn how to live together when they live together. People learn how to, to help each other and be good for each other or whatever when they, when they live together. And I think a small environment like this where people are accessible on all levels of the hierarchy to you, it, it, it does develop that fondness. You have a fondness because people have been friendly to you and people have, have given you a chance and have been supportive of you. I've had a lot of encouragement from my professors as far as what I'm going to do when I graduate from here. They've all, you know, helped me to explore different avenues. And, I, and I, I know them. I would consider them my friends. And that was something that I wanted. I wanted to develop that kind of a relationship with someone who was going to be teaching me, because I think that's the best way to learn. Have you gone far enough to know what the International Seabed Authority would do or what its legal powers or economic powers would be? They really believe it's very important, especially for the minerals and the oil yeah. mainly. Is it the common territory of mankind, do you think? What is your, your main reservation that one simply doesn't take five courses in the yeah, senior I spring? I I'm more. wondering if you think that it is too much and if I am going in over my head. Uh, it sounds to me, <clears throat> as we've worked together over the years, that what you're doing is you're getting a liberal arts education in the fullest sense of the word. Uh -huh. And what you should leave college with in a real education is questions uh -huh. and ideas and wondering about what it all means and how it all goes together. Uh -huh.
Somehow, integrating yourself into a community like this one, along with uh, other black students from different parts of the country, some ca sometimes can be quite uh, pressure-packed. I'm a student advisor of 30 minority students on campus, and I, I serve as a supplement to the, the advisor program that is already set up. But we address issues socially that never had been addressed before. I think an aspiring young black man has to know how to deal with that type of environment. And there's no better way, I think, to learn how to deal with that uh, other than coming up here, living and eating and learning at the same time. I have met individuals here who come from different parts of the country where they just never have had the opportunity to deal with a minority person before. I had to learn to feel comfortable around people who may, in fact, be uncomfortable with me. And in the long run, uh, there's been a mutual benefit Athletics has always been a major part of my life. When I'm in football, I'm much more disciplined because I know I have a certain amount of time that I have to put in the football each day. From 2.30 to 7 o'clock, football owns me. Football takes a lot of time, as does any sport in college. I just feel that once you become disciplined to a sport, it disciplines you in your work, too. Sometimes it's easier during football to get your studies done because you know you're only going to have a certain amount of time to do it. And when I schedule a meeting for the new alcohol policy committee, I know that that meeting is going to last probably about an hour. So I know how to schedule my time and budget around that. Take your mark. At Hamilton, everyone has an opportunity to participate in a wide variety of athletics. Yeah, help us out, help us out. These athletics range from simple, fun intramural games to club sports to varsity athletics. I'd say women's sports are pretty much equal to men's here and that there are as many varsity sports offered. I enjoy going to women's games. They're highly competitive and they come and root for us, so I feel that we should go root for them. Any kind of sport is offered intramurally here, and just about everyone gets involved. There's a lot of kids here that just like to go out and just play sport just for an hour or two every day. Hamilton encourages a wide variety of experiences. Because you just can't learn everything right from books. Mm, okay, that's, that's the right. Experience comes through meeting people and learning about life, and I find that's a, that's a great deal of what goes on on this campus. Yes. You want some? Uh, a little later, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought my first year I wasn't going to do anything at Hamilton College. I said, no, no, I'm scared. I'm going to, you know, buckle down to the books and concentrate. And these opportunities just came up that I never, I never thought would. Probably if I had been in a bigger institution, I would have just buckled down to the books the whole year. I, in fact, I'm pretty sure I would have. I went out for the radio station. I was sure I would never be able to get a show or anything. And I got a show, a classical music show. WHCL FM in Clinton, New York. And this is Wendy McDowell bringing you glorious classical music on this Sunday, the 5th of May. I really love listening to classical music and I really love doing my show. But I think what I enjoy most of all is sitting down and being able to play the piano. The practice rooms are always open, and I just come in and play whenever I feel like I need to get away from it all. And it makes me think, I guess. I don't know. I've learned to look at, at people, I think, and I've, I've, learned, I've really learned to think. I mean, I'm so surprised that the way I can sit down now and, and read something and analyze an argument or analyze something I've read. And I think when you come into college, you're pretty confused. And college definitely changes your, your outlooks on a, on a lot of things. And I think these courses have definitely helped me. I feel like I, I know pretty much what my morals are now and what my values are. 
And that's, that's a difficult thing to find out, especially at this age, I think. The people are very proud of Hamilton College. Um, part of it is the tradition, the quality of education, the quality of the students, uh, the beauty of the campus, just everything um, comes together and, and people just are very proud of, of what Hamilton has to offer. To a certain extent, uh, Hamilton education almost forces you to get out and really look at things in deeper, uh, deeper detail and maybe be a little bit less comfortable and really ask questions which are difficult to ask and difficult to answer. And it's also a beautiful place. And, and I think that's one, you know, kind of a frivolous thing to like about a college, but it's, it's also important. You're in a beautiful environment and there's, you know, all the way back to Aristotle, that's, you know, that was the way to learn.